The new crackdown on gasoline-powered vehicles forces all electric vehicles to you and higher prices on all vehicles. So the government has finalized a list of new environmental regulations that they are calling, in quote, curbing gas-powered vehicle tailpipe emissions as part of a broader effort to reduce greenhouse gases and emissions and combat global warming. Sounds wonderful, but how does this impact you and car prices in the economy? Well, that may surprise you. The EPA's finalized rule is a watered-down version compared to the original proposal, which would have eliminated gasoline-powered cars by 2030. While the EPA will seek for electric vehicles to make up 67% of new car sales by 2032, it will allow automakers to do so by using a mix of vehicles, including plug-in hybrids, hybrids, and improved internal combustion engines, in addition to pure battery electric vehicles. Now, you may think this is a win, but actually, it isn't because what they're going to do is put additional regulations on three quarter ton and one ton trucks. And there's going to be an impact there when it comes to literally everything you do and everything you buy. Beyond the push continued for electric cars, which uses one third less employees to manufacturers, which means the UAW just made a wonderful agreement for their employees, except one third of them or more will no longer be needed to build cars. So it's going to hurt the unions, it's going to hurt the economy, and it's going to hurt consumers, and it's going to hurt you. This also means that car prices are going to get more expensive as more regulations are in place. Remember they passed that infrastructure bill in 2021, that section 24220, the kill switch law, which must be installed in every vehicle by 2026? Well, that means that your vehicles are going to get more expensive because somebody's going to pay for that technology. And mandating vehicles that get better fuel economy also means that they need to be lighter, no spare tires, more standard safety features, and more government regulations, which equals you're gonna pay a lot more for your vehicle. And that doesn't mean just electric cars, that means all vehicles are going to get way more expensive. Now, as a reminder, car manufacturers take a loss between $6,000 and $40,000 on every electric vehicle. Now, how are they going to make up for that loss? Because they've got to pay for turning on the lights and paying the employees and all the parts. Well, they're going to sell your data, which we've covered on a different video. But they're also going to add subscription fees and increase the cost of your vehicle as well. Senate Republicans are introducing a disapproval resolution to overturn the Biden administration's standards for reducing tailpipe emissions for new vehicles. Senators Pete Ricketts of Nebraska and Senator Sullivan of Alaska, both members of the Environmental and Public Works Committee, are introducing two separate disapproval resolutions that would overturn the finalized rule which would create further restrictions on new vehicle emissions. Now, the pair called the standards in quote, delusional and deemed that an electric vehicle mandate would make it harder for consumers to buy and maintain their vehicles. Now, this is the Biden administration's attempt to get rid of internal combustion engines without congressional authority. The senators said in a statement and quote, Congress must take action to keep vehicle costs down, protect our free market economy and defend consumer choice. We can't allow Biden to make us more reliant on foreign adversaries like China who control the critical minerals needed for electric vehicles. And this is true. The pair reasoned that the push for electric vehicles would not work for their home states, where extreme cold, isolated communities and long distance drives would make for a hazardous combination for their vehicles. And that's true for many states, whether it's too warm or too cold or in the middle of the country where you get a combination of both. This doesn't work for everybody. The administration has faced pushback from auto manufacturers as well, as its attempts to deliver electric vehicle targets with manufacturer trade groups arguing that the administration's EV sales targets are not achievable in the intended timeframe and risk limiting consumer choice while triggering price hikes for all types of vehicles. To prove this, just drive by any dealer. Look what's on the lot, tons of electric cars that aren't being sold. Walk in the dealer and talk to a salesperson and they will be thrilled to talk to you about an electric vehicle because there's all kinds of incentives to get rid of them because those people that want them bought them. The rest of us, maybe we don't want them. Maybe a hybrid's a better choice. The new rule regulates tailpipe emissions for light and medium duty vehicles, while another rule regulated heavy duty vehicles will be introduced at a later time. This will impact work trucks, increase the cost of companies and independent small businesses, which means anytime you need a plumber, the price just went up, electrician, anyone to do any repairs. Yeah, it's coming to everybody. Now, Ricketts introduced a disapproval resolution this week, and Sullivan will be introducing the resolution dealing with heavy-duty vehicles once the rule is finalized. 
Senator Joe Manchin said that he would also support the effort to overturn both rules. So be on the lookout to see how these votes come down on the House floor. Only 8% of cars are electric on the road today. And in eight years, the new regulation would mandate that 67% of cars to be electric. But at what cost? This takes away your choice. Consumers deserve the right to decide what type of vehicle works best for them. The federal government is making decisions for you, for their own agenda, and not for what you want. Now, this regulation is bad for American consumers and good for China. This will negatively impact American jobs in the auto industry and all the companies that support it, which are quite a few if you start looking a little deeper. And to you, as an individual, car prices are going to get more expensive, which also means insurance rates are going to go up as prices increase. And we'll be watching to see what happens next. Stay tuned. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Please add your comments and questions. I'll be more than happy to get involved. If you'd like to support our channel, you can buy me a cup of coffee. The link is down below or just stay a second longer in a smart way to save a few bucks on your cell phone plan. Links for the website, social media, the book and the podcast are down below. I'm Lauren Fix. Thank you so much for watching. Have you ever thought why in the world is my wireless bill so darn high? What are we paying all this money for? Speed, coverage, data, access to 5G, unlimited talk and text, mobile hotspots? We are partnering with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers all of these features for as low as $15 per month. They're reimagining the wireless shopping experience and made it easy and online. No stores, no salespeople, just huge direct to you savings. Why should you pay more when you have access to premium wireless. Mint Mobile runs on the nation's largest 5G network. Whether you use your phone to watch YouTube, listen to podcasts or play games, you get the same speed and performance as the big guys while connecting to Mint's network. How hard is it to switch your service? Big Wireless wants you to think it's hard, but switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to digital e-SIM cards, which most phones now have, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. And if your phone doesn't have an e-SIM, Mint will ship you a new SIM card for free. Just go to trymintmobile.com slash Lauren Fix, also linked in the description down below, to get premium wireless for $15 a month.